Good evening, folks. This is Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project. On Wednesdays, December 6th at 8.07 p.m. Mountain Time, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update. The SoCal wildfires have increased. L.A. Ventura declares state of emergency as 200,000 evacuate. Yesterday, 24 hours ago, we were at 27,000 evacuations. We are now at 10 times that level. Additionally, you want to notice the smoke in the stratosphere uh, extending high up into the atmosphere. And this is going to add to the albedo effect. If we come over to our friend Al's map here, we can see above 45 degrees north that almost everything has become snow covered. I want you to look at this anomalous snow down here at 30 degrees north on the Mexico-Texas border. It's a heads up. That would be like snow in North Africa, Saudi Arabia, and India. If you come over here, you can see there is snow in these regions. Uh, we've been reported on extreme cold, multi-decadal cold in Balochistan in Pakistan, and that's over in this region where these snows are occurring. That's a heads up. Let's talk about the fires. The fires are being fueled by strong Santa Ana winds, and they could worsen uh, through Thursday. Guys, that's tomorrow. So we have 24 more hours of these fires spreading, and they are mostly uncontained. That's a heads up. This is going to add to albedo effect. We have more albedo effect coming up in the video. So send your thoughts and prayers to all those people out there in California. This weather pattern is not going to end. It's going to stay high and dry for at least two weeks. We have fire warnings here in the Four Corners region, but this persists. Persistent cold in Washington for the next two weeks is going to be locked in. East Coast, this is you. When you see green anomalies like this, this is going to be at least eight degrees below normal in these whitish light green zones. So it's a heads up to the East Coast. Moving into the Christmas holiday, it's looking like you guys will have a white Christmas. We always do. That's a heads up. Arctic air spilling into the eastern United States. And colder than normal weather should stick around for the next two weeks. And there's the isobaric map. Now, these Santa Ana winds are being kicked up because of this huge temperature gradient between these two masses. Now, we've been telling you for two years that this type of huge oscillating pattern is what is going to be typical as we move into this grand solar minimum. And you can see these troughs are diving thousands of miles from the Arctic. This one extending almost all the way to the Yucatan Peninsula. Heads up, Cancun. <laughs> Put on your knickers. Maryland's first cold weather death is in Garrett County. This comes two weeks before winter, and this is in Maryland. Okay? That's in the middle of the East Coast. We're not even talking New England, folks. Storm Caroline to hit Scotland with heavy rain and powerful winds. This is you, UK. Storm Caroline is expected to bring heavy rain and strong winds to parts of northern and western Scotland Thursday morning, December 7th. 2017, snow is expected across much of Scotland, Northern Ireland, Wales, and parts of northern West, Northwest England. Let's look at this amazing map. Oh my God, I didn't pay, pay my bill. No, it just says we agree to cookies. Guys, it's a heads up. Let's get to the actual video here. Doesn't seem to be wanting to load for us. We'll come back to it. Veggie and fruit farms in Konkan, Nashik, reporting losses after o Oki, and this is the uh, tropical storm to hit India, driving record rains. This is crop losses, 80% of the standing vegetable crop, including leafy greens, onions, and tomatoes, and fruit, including mangoes, grapes, and figs. In Nashik, Konan, and Kolapur are getting spoiled. A senior agricultural department official told TOI the maximum damage was caused to mango cultivation. Heads up, mangoes. Here I see 70 to 80% of crops affected in total. We're talking cucumber, cabbage, cauliflower, fenugreek. That's not looking good for the uh, overpopulated continent of India right now. Very bright fireball recorded over Florida. I'll leave you links to this. It uh, was recorded streaking through the night sky. Here is the site map. This is from all the way down from Naples up to Tampa, mostly in the Tampa area and St. Petersburg was where the visibility was. Now we're coming into the Geminids and we have uh, 3200 Phaethon is about to pass us on December 17th. So we'll be doing some videos and updates on that large three mile wide rock that's gonna scrape the earth shortly. Let's talk about cosmic ray flux. 
The weekly volcanic activity report, November 29th through the 5th, is quite active. We had a huge KP0 week with almost uh, one-fifth of the week being at KP0. And we have new activity unrest reported at five volcanoes between the 29th and the 5th, including Agung, which we're very familiar with, the Great Sitkin, which we reported on, Kluchevaski in Kamchatka and Ruska, Pacaya in Guatemala, and Vilraca in Chile. There's ongoing activity at 20 more volcanoes. I will leave you links to this. Let's take a quick uh, talk about another volcano we'll be adding to the list today. And that's Sishildin, Shishildin, Shishaldin or Shishildin. Shishaldin volcano alert was raised in Alaska. This is a nonviolent uh, volcano. However, it can provide the stratosphere with plenty of cooling dust and ash. Due to increased seismic activity, infrastructure activity recorded over the past weeks at Shishildin, in Alaska, they raised the aviation color code to the volcano yellow. So that's going to change the map, and we're going to be adding a six volcano to the North American threat risk. Now, Shishildin, I'll leave you links to the Wikipedia so you can read all about it. There was an earthquake, 4.2, striking San Diego County. Guys, if you uh, that's right downtown. We'll be talking about this quake. It's near Julian. But real quick, let's come over to uh, the seismic map and check out the quake because there has been an uptick in California quakes here. Here's the 4.0 at Julian. Now, it was kicked off by a pre-quake at 2.6 at 2953 UTC. Four minutes later, the 4.0 happened, and then five minutes later, there was a 3.0 aftershock. Bing, bong, boom. So this event might be done. But there's a moderate uptick here on the San Andreas area, so it's a heads-up west coast. We just had a... 4.9 in Papua New Guinea kickoff. And so we'll be watching that. Uh, real quick, uh, let's talk about the Great Sitkin Island. So the volcano that just woke up here, Shishaldin in Alaska. I'll show you where that is. It's right here at the end of the main uh island chain at the beginning of the Aleutian Islands here. So there is no seismic uptick, but I noticed this uh, 4.1 near Adak, and that's where uh, the great Sitkin volcano is, which there is very little data on hit eruptive history at the great Sitkin. I'll leave you links to this. Now this just woke up this month, and I want to take you to a picture of the volcano. You're looking at the great Sitkin volcano. I'll point it out again for you. It's right where this earthquake popped off. This is the island right here, the Great Sitkin Island, 60 square miles. It's the one, two, three, four, five, six volcano in on the Aleutians from this curl. And Adak is right here, which is another big uh, volcano. But the eruptive history of this uh, is not really known. There is no information on it that I could find in a quick search. I may be able to glean some information if I dig deeper. But I just want to show you the geometry of the mountain. Here's the mountain, and here's the flank. You can notice this big chunk of it missing. This volcano used to look like a point here. See, this is this volcano here. Now picture if we exploded the whole top of this volcano off into space. And that's what you get there. Boom! Absolutely. This entire mountaintop is missing. So at point, some point, this blew off into the stratosphere and cooled the earth. And it's probably in our recent past because of the sharp edges here. I would say that this is less than 50,000 years old, this eruption, probably closer to 10,000 years and associated with some of the great cooling events in the last, in the Holocene. And now if this volcano is also waking up, we can expect large amounts of uh, gas and ash to come out of this huge opening, similar to uh, Mount St. Helens being decapitated. The same thing happened here, and this part of the mountain blew this way. That's a heads up on Sitkin, which is in the Aleutian chain, which is waking up this month, as well as a new volcano, Shishaldin, to add to the list, thanks to cosmic ray flux and the descent into the grand solar minimum. And that's a boom. 
Guys, let's real quick t take a look at the sun. I want to point something out. If you watch Ben Davidson's update this morning, you would have noted that a fourth plasma filament erupted from the sun in as many weeks. That's one plasma filament per week for the last four weeks. Luckily, none of these are headed our way, but the last few were close. This one is going completely back and away from us. We don't have to worry about it. But the moment it detached, a sunspot group formed right on the blank disk. 2690. And where I'm at here is at solarham.net. And you can click on the sunspot and then you can do your own sunspot research here. It is already numbered at 2690, which is AR, meaning the region 12,690. It's beta class because it can be alpha, beta, or delta. And here it gives you the probability of eruptiveness, 5% in the C range, 1% M, and 1% X. So that's how you look at sunspots. And beta spots, which is this is listed at, means this is a complete separation between the positive and the negative sides of the sunspot. If we start to see mixing of these blues and reds together across this line, these numbers, the eruptive, eruptive uh, percentage in C, M, and X go up because there's more magnetic mixing potential and the potential for flares. Now, this just showed up, and what I'm going to suggest is as this curves around and goes out of our range, it's going to start flaring up. That's a heads up on sunspot group 2690, which just appeared after our fourth plasma filament eruption in four weeks. Now, scientists are concerned about the abnormal phenomenon on the sun. So are we at this channel. That's why it exists. This is coming out of the Quebec Post, and it's going to be schooling some Canadians. I'll leave you links to this article, and it basically says that we're headed into a grand solar minimum. Thank you, sun. Thank you, science. A couple other things I want to leave you with is some Native American stories on Cascadia. And this is coming from the Pacific Northwest Seismic Networks. All you people up in Cascadia, there is uh, lots of information about a major tsunami, an earthquake, an earth shifting event that happened between 1699 and 1700. And upon further work in the 1980s and 90s, they refined that to a single date, January 26th, 1700 at 9 p.m. Pacific Standard. A massive tsunami ripped across the Pacific and hit Japan, as well as the Pacific Northwest. Now, over the past 3,500 years, these great earthquakes of M9 have reoccurred seven times with an average interval of 550 years, though four of the events reoccurred between 200 and 400 years after the previous great quake, and they were all triggered by high cosmic ray flux during solar grand minimums. Now, this research should has renewed interest in understanding how these events may have impacted the thousands of natives here. But heads up, there are millions of people living in this region. And it's only a matter of time until they all wash into the sea. This is not alarmist news. It's just the brass tacks and the facts. And I'm sorry to say, if you live in this area with the information that you can glean these days, you should be looking to move inland not only do you have a tsunami threat for this giant fault thrust, you have a threat to catastrophic loss of life during a large earthquake event that's inland. You could be sucked into the earth due to liquefaction. And within the next two decades, at least five or ten of the volcanoes in Cascadia will explode. It's not a good place to raise your children. I'll leave you links to the Native American stories. You can do your own homework. And I'll leave you links to the Pacific Northwest Seismic Networks where you can see the seismic activity. You can see the uptick at Mount Rainier and Mount St. Helens for yourself. It's only going to continue to increase as we move forward. I'll leave you links to the article from Quebec and Solarham so you can do your own research on this developing uh, sunspot that we have. And that's a big boom. Guys, I hope you got something out of the video. Uh, we'll be putting up parts two through five in the coming days um, of the Upheaval series so that you can be more familiar with the work of John Casey and the report on catastrophic earthquakes coming to North America and worldwide in the coming decades, forced by the sun, not by man. It's not your fault. Be safe, everybody. Subscribe to our channel and share this with like-minded people. Get involved with our Patreon and check out the perks.
Peace out.